Welcome to a guided tour of a full mouse series using the DEXIS Titanium Sensor by Cavo. For purposes of demonstration, the hygienic barrier has been omitted from this animated video. To help prevent cross-contamination between patients, place a new hygienic barrier on the sensor for each new patient. The holder setup for this position will include the universal aiming ring, the universal aiming bar, and the yellow posterior horizontal bite block. The first image in our full series will be the patient's maxillary right molar. Position the sensor in the patient's mouth toward the midline of the palate, parallel to the roots of the molar and centered on the first molar. Ask the patient to close and slide the aiming ring as close to the patient's cheek as possible. The cone of the x-ray emitter must be placed flush with the aiming ring and then trigger your exposure. Ask the patient to open slightly and gently slide the sensor forward so the contacts of the first and second premolars are centered on your sensor. The sensor should be placed far enough forward to capture the distal of the canine. Ask the patient to gently close, position the cone of the x-ray emitter, and trigger your exposure. The configuration of the sensor and holder does not have to be adjusted for the next image in our full series, which begins with the patient mandibular left molar. Position the sensor so it is parallel to the roots of the teeth and the occlusal line, centered on the second molar. Place either next to or over the tongue, whichever is most comfortable for the patient. Ask the patient to relax and close. Slide the aiming ring as close to the patient's jaw as possible. Place the x-ray emitter cone flush with the aiming ring and trigger your exposure. Ask the patient to open slightly and gently slide the sensor forward, centering the first and second premolars on the sensor. Place the x-ray cone flush with the aiming ring and trigger your exposure. The image should contain the distal of the canine through the mesial of the second molar. The configuration of the sensor and holder will now change for the next set of images in our series, the maxillary left periapicals. Position the sensor in the patient's mouth toward the midline of the palate, parallel to the roots of the molar and centered on the second molar. Ask the patient to close and slide the aiming ring as close to the patient's cheek as possible. The cone of the x-ray emitter must be placed flush with the aiming ring and then trigger your exposure. Ask the patient to open slightly and gently slide the sensor forward so the contacts of the first and second premolars are centered on your sensor. The sensor should be placed far enough forward to capture the distal of the canine. Ask the patient to gently close, position the cone of the x-ray emitter, and trigger your exposure. The configuration of the sensor and holder does not have to be adjusted for the next set of images in our full series, which begins with the patient's mandibular right molar. Position the sensor so that it is parallel to the roots of the teeth and the occlusal line, centering on the second molar. Place either under or over the tongue, whichever is most comfortable for the patient. Ask the patient to relax and close. Slide the aiming ring as close to the patient's jaw as possible. Place the x-ray emitter cone flush with the aiming ring and trigger your exposure. Ask the patient to open slightly and gently slide the sensor forward, centering the first and second premolars on the sensor. Slide the aiming ring as close to the patient's jaw as possible. Position the cone of the x-ray emitter and trigger your exposure. The image should contain the distal of the canine through the mesial of the second molar. We will now move on to capture anterior periapical images. For anterior periapical images, you will use the same aiming bar and rig configuration. However, you will switch the yellow posterior bite block to the blue anterior bite block. We will begin by taking the maxillary right canine. Position the sensor so the canine is centered on the sensor, well into the palate and parallel to the long axis of the tooth. Ask the patient to close and slide the aiming ring as close to the patient's face as possible. The cone of the x-ray emitter must be placed flush with the aiming ring and then trigger your exposure. Ask the patient to open slightly and reposition the sensor to the midline in order to capture the central incisors. Place the sensor well into the palatal region in the area of the second premolar. 
If the sensor is too close to the teeth, the palatal curve may prevent parallel placement. Ask the patient to close and slide the aiming ring as close to the patient's nose as possible. The cone of the x-ray emitter must be placed flush with the aiming ring and then trigger your exposure. Ask the patient to open slightly and reposition the sensor to the left canine. Position the sensor so that the canine is centered on the sensor and is well into the palate and parallel to the long axis of the tooth. Ask the patient to close and slide the aiming ring as close to the patient's face as possible. The cone of the x-ray emitter must be placed flush with the aiming ring and then trigger your exposure. The configuration of the sensor and holer does not have to be adjusted for the next set of images in our full series, which will be the mandibular, interior, canine, and incisors. Position the sensor so the canine is centered on the sensor and the sensor is parallel to the long axis of the tooth as much as possible. The tongue should be mildly displaced so the sensor can be inserted into the floor of the mouth and far enough away from the teeth as not to impinge on the mandibular curve. Ask the patient to gently close and slide the aiming ring as close to the patient's chin as possible. The cone of the x-ray emitter must be placed flush with the aiming ring and then trigger your exposure. Ask the patient to open in order to reposition the sensor to the midline for capturing the central incisors. Position the sensor so it is parallel to the roots of the teeth and as far into the patient's mouth as possible without causing discomfort, usually as far back as the second premolar. Ask the patient to close gently, slide the aiming ring as close to the patient's chin as possible, place the x-ray emitter cone flush with the aiming ring, and trigger the exposure. Ask the patient to open in order to reposition the sensor to the right canine. Position the sensor so the canine is centered on the sensor and the sensor is parallel to the long axis of the tooth as much as possible. The tongue should be mildly displaced so the sensor can be inserted into the floor of the mouth and far enough away from the teeth as not to impinge on the mandibular curve. Ask the patient to gently close and slide the aiming ring as close to the patient's chin as possible. The cone of the x-ray emitter must be placed flush with the aiming ring and then trigger your exposure. The configuration of the sensor and holer will now change for the next set of images in our series, the horizontal bite wing. We will use the straight bite wing aiming bar and the red horizontal or vertical bite wing bite block. Position the sensor so that it is parallel to the occlusal line. Center the sensor on the second molar, move the sensor toward the palatal midline, and ask the patient to close. Slide the aiming ring close to the patient's face. Position the x-ray emitter cone flush with the aiming ring and trigger your exposure. Ask the patient to open slightly, slide the sensor forward, and center the first and second premolar on the sensor. Move the sensor toward the midline and slightly forward again in order to capture the distal of the canine. Ask the patient to close. Slide the aiming ring close to the patient's face. Position the x-ray emitter cone flush with the aiming ring and trigger your exposure. The configuration of the sensor and holer does not have to change for the next and final set of images, the left bite wings. Ask the patient to open slightly and center the first and second premolar on the sensor in order to capture the distal of the canine. Ask the patient to close. Slide the aiming ring close to the patient's face, position the x-ray emitter cone flush with the aiming ring and trigger your exposure. Position the sensor so that it is parallel to the occlusal line Center the sensor on the second molar and ask the patient to close. Slide the aiming ring close to the patient's face, position the x-ray emitter cone flush with the aiming ring and trigger your exposure. This concludes our full mouth series using the DEXA's titanium sensor by Cavo.